So when, once you blacked out, they got you onto the chopper. Mm -hmm. And what what happened during that period? So I don't remember any of that, mm -hmm. but I, I, I've met the entire medical team. Yeah. And uh, so this is what they told me happened. So they, they had me and the other guy that I said got shrapnel in his back and in his tricep. And they put us on the back of this Chinook. And the way they prioritize casualties in, in this situation, it sounds really harsh, but if you have a guy who's dead and a guy that's dying, you have to ignore the dead guy because you don't want two dead guys. So they felt for a pulse. I didn't have one. They couldn't get any fluids into me because all my veins had collapsed because of the blood loss. And then they went to put an oxygen mask on me and it should have steamed up to show I was breathing, but it didn't. So they went, right, he's gone. Throw him in the corner. Everyone get to work on this guy. As a medic walked past me to get some kit to go and work on the other guy, this medic said my eyes started to, to flutter, which meant my heart was beating. Mm. So he alerted some of the other medics and they came over and they got to work on me. Now, three days before I was injured, whoever's in charge of the military medical world had given the green light for this new technique to be used where if you can't get fluids into somebody through their veins with the intravenous line, you can drill into their tibia and their fibia, right? And you can successfully administer fluids that way. Problem being, I didn't have a tibia or a fibia either side because they've been destroyed by the landmine. So the medics decided, and this had never been done ever. This wasn't theorized or even talked about. Like no one had any idea what they were doing, but they just got this medical drill, two medical drills, and one drilled in the front of my hip, one drilled in the back of my hip. They put the intravenous lines in. The first time it failed, they said that my skin was too loose. So they tightened it up, went back in again. Second time the line bit, fluids went in. Three minutes later, I'm awake, responsive, and talking about how much my ass hurt. <laughs> Um, which is not a marine thing. It's apparently <laughs> probably is as well. Yeah, it? probably <laughs> is a little bit of that, but um, it's a side effect apparently of mass amounts of morphine. Yeah, okay. So because I had so much morphine from the medic to the medics on the back, mm -hmm. that was a really positive sign. Yeah, they knew that that I was going to survive because of that. So they flew me back to a place called Camp Bastion, took me to the field hospital. Obviously, these were traumatic amputations, so it was a mess. So the surgeons had to have a look at the damage and then decide where the healthy flesh and, and tissue was and then amputated both my legs above the knee and my right arm above mm -hmm. the elbow. 